Okay, and on to the last company for the battlefield for 2022. We have from Boulder, Colorado, we have Kaon Space. Presenting for Kaon Space is Aras Fezi and Greg Ruda. Come on out, guys. There are one million pieces of debris larger than one centimeter in diameter in Earth orbit. They're traveling at 17,000 miles an hour. That's 10 times faster than a bullet. At those speeds, a small fragment size of a penny can destroy a multi-million dollar satellite, not only ending that mission, but they create new debris that, of course, threatens other satellites. In a chain reaction known as Kessler syndrome, if it happens, it can destroy an entire orbital regime and it can make it unusable for generations to come. Our lives are governed by satellites. Close your eyes and imagine one day when GPS doesn't work. And that's just a simple example. What if I told you 95% of the carrying capacity of low Earth orbit is already taken up by space junk, but we're just getting started? Since the 1960s, we have launched about 10,000 satellites to Earth orbit. In the next decade alone, we're launching 10 times that. So what's happening is the processes that satellite operators have traditionally used to avoid collisions are falling apart because they're manual and they're prone to human error and delays, which is why we have developed Pathfinder, an autonomous satellite collision avoidance solution that reduces the response time to potential collision events by more than 90%. Let me show you how. Let's switch to the demo. Meet Jim. Jim is a traditional satellite operator who doesn't believe in Pathfinder, so he has to watch his mailbox like a hawk. He gets hundreds of emails a day, and if he misses one of those needles in that haystack, it's going to be a bad day for all of us. So when he gets that scary email, he has to frantically look for data, download it from different data sources, put them through processes that he has generated, the scripts that he has written to analyze, create courses of action, then run them against other plans that his colleagues have, iterate, iterate, and iterate. It is slow, it is kind of ridiculous, and it's borderline irresponsible. Now meet Greg. Greg is a Pathfinder user. What Greg does is, is he gets a notification from Pathfinder saying that one of your satellites is in trouble. So he logs on to Pathfinder, and he notices that one of his favorite satellites is going to have a collision with another satellite. And one more tab, right? There you go. And he notices that it's going to happen in three days, and the probability of collision is pretty high. It's five in 10,000. That's pretty high. So he can look at the visualization that we've created from the moment of closest approach. He looks at it, it looks bad, then he can go and look at the history of the event. He notices that Kahan has been tracking this event for a while. And the reason that he's getting a warning now is because the risk has increased over a threshold that he's comfortable. So he's going to go look at some of the maneuver options that we have generated for him. And then he's going to choose one that fits his, you know, his model. So um, he's going to look at the option and pick one that is bringing the risk to a tolerable level, in this case, 1e e minus 9, that's pretty good, uh, and he picks that. Now, Pathfinder provides him with a pre-post analysis of this maneuver. What's going to happen if I perform this maneuver? And not only that, we also provide a full 3D visualization and simulation of the event, and he can see what happens if he performs the maneuver or if he doesn't. The blue line shows you a satellite with a perform well, after performing the maneuver. The red line is if he doesn't. He likes it, and he sends it to the satellite, and he's done. That, take, that took him about 60 seconds. What you didn't see, though, massive amounts of data, from solar radiation pressure to onboard GPS data to radar data, ingested in near real time, fed into models that we have developed that predict the, the pr trajectories of objects in space, fed into optimization models that ingest and consume every constraint a satellite operator has to produce optimal plans that not only minimize the risk, but also extend the satellite life by minimizing fuel usage. All of that in a few minutes. I call that magic, and it's only possible thanks to our team.
Let's go back to the presentation. I'm a second-time founder. My co-founder, Siamak, has a PhD in aerospace engineering. He has done this for over 10 years manually for NASA, JPL, and commercial missions. Our team has combined over 100 years of experience in the domain. We are only three years old, but we're currently providing service to more than 500 satellites across 15 commercial customers. We have been awarded multiple contracts from agencies such as Air Force, Space Force, and NASA. We're really excited here at Disrupt to announce our second commercial product, Gamut. Gamut ensures safety of flight for launch vehicle and the onboard payload. As you can see, day in and day out, we're building technologies that are making spaceflight safer. So if you're excited about space, if you want to make a difference, we will be growing our team soon. So please consider joining us. Go to khan.space slash techcrunch to sign up. If you're an investor or if you're with media, and if you want to learn more about the problem that we're solving and how we're solving it, we're downstairs at the exhibit area, so come talk to us. Or you can go to our website and schedule a meeting with us. Thank you for your time. I'm looking forward to talking to you all. Thanks. Can we take a second and acknowledge your T-shirts? Because they're fantastic. I just thought you should know that. <laughs> Thank you. OK, Thank you, Nicole, Thank let's you. start with you. Thanks. Um, curious to hear a little bit about the sales cycle. Who are you selling to? Um, are you able to pilot? What's the event that drives conversion? How long does it take end to end? Yeah, so we sell directly to satellite operators today. So if you're a commercial satellite operator or if you're a government satellite operator, you're our customer. And we directly outreach to them, and we generally, once we tell them the story, it resonates with them because they feel it on a daily basis. Um, and then we generally are able to provide them with a uh, demo environment to test, uh, and it's relatively quick once they see the value. Great. Allison? Sure. I'd love to learn a little bit more about how big of a problem this is. You said about 97% of the orbit, I think, or 90% was taken up, how often are these collisions happening and what is the cost of one of these versus the cost of your system for monitoring? I'm glad you're looking at it from a cost perspective. The ideal number of collisions is zero because right. we've had a few of them in the past and every single one of them generate thousands of pieces of debris. So the idea is that we don't want any collisions to happen. Uh, some of these major operators perform an order of hundreds of maneuvers a week just to keep their mm -hmm. constellations safe. So you have the cost of the fuel that you use, mm -hmm. And if a collision happens, obviously the cost can be tremendous. Right. Not only you know, broader cost to the orbital environment, but also the cost of the satellite that's lost or other assets. Right, Mariana? Um, what, if any, proprietary input data sets do you guys use to determine what, what is out there? Do you have phase array antenna to determine? Really, it's a two-part question, which is one, what is the smallest piece of debris that you can track, and um, do you have any proprietary means for looking across the entire data set? Great question. So today, we're not, we are a software company, and we use data that comes from different data sources. One of them is high accuracy catalog, hack for short. Um, it's maintained by the US Space Force. They track generally anything larger than 10 centimeters in diameter in North Orbit very routinely. So we overlay that with GPS-based data that we ingest from our customers and some other constellation that provide it, makes it a very accurate representation of, of space. Now that said, there's a big gap that other companies are working to cover, and that's including US government, um, to track objects that are lethal, they're large enough to uh, cause damage, but we can't track today. Pay? Hey. I have a very basic question. No, no shade to Greg, the operator, but uh, why does there still need to be a human in the loop for your system? So we actually, uh, good question, we have uh, intentionally made this, uh, this last process uh, human in the loop just to create that trust between us because we are a uh, you know, startup, we are a small company, and in aerospace you need trust right, to, for your system to work. So, uh, but our goal is full autonomy, uh, you know, uh, completing that feedback loop to the, uh, to the satellite. Okay. Peter? Sure. Um, I love thinking about space, um, having named my firm after Constellation, so this is great. Um, tell us, I mean, are there future other ancillary kind of, you know, products that you can sell? So, like, I think about insurance. Um, I think about, you know, a future trip where you're helping kind of vacuum up debris. Like, are there any, like, 
big, bold ideas and experiments you can kind of launch in the far out, so maybe you know, five years from today? No, great question. You, you kind of answered some of it yourself. Yeah. So <laughs> it's all about the data. It's all about algorithms. So yeah. that the more data we gather on where objects are and what intentions are, that opens the door to many products, one vertical being insurance. Yeah. The other adjacent vertical to that is financial markets, because they want to understand the risk of their investment. Yeah. And the list goes on. And that's on the data side. On the algorithm side, we just announced a new, pro a new project with one of our uh, with US Space Force, where we are providing safe rendezvous and proximity operation algorithms. So yes, um, there's, there's a lot of opportunities that, yeah. that they will you know, present themselves. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Thank you very much, Kayan. Thank Give you. it up for them. And while you're still there, give it a w one more time for all the judges. Thank you so much.